century. And Channing Peak, who is a Santa Inez Valley uh, artist here, they met in 1953 in the summertime. And, and since that first meeting, they forged a very sincere and heartfelt relationship based on their both their love of abstraction, their interest in art in general, but also a shared interest and love of the American West. Um, the exhibition is really going to, develop, to delve into the similarities between their practices, but also the differences, and sort of show kind of this, these larger umbrella ideas that they were both embracing in their lives and in their art. Um, this, this picture, I show this picture, it was at, it's in the foyer actually blown up. But in many ways, it's the kernel of inspiration for the exhibition. I sort of saw this photo and it really, everything, and the more I learned about both of these artists, everything really fell into place because here's uh, this is at one of their meetings and Channing has just placed his cowboy hat on top of Picasso's head. Um, it's a great image just because you can see the sort of camaraderie between them. But they each, as the more I learned about each of them, the more I realized how uh, they were each feeding each other in different ways. For Channing, he was you know, with one of the most important artists in throughout art history. He was you know, a, so another artist who was interested in abstraction, the father of Cubism. And for Picasso, he really saw Channing as the epitome of the mythical American West. Here was this guy who came into his studio wearing cowboy boots and a cowboy hat, very easygoing, um, really ready to just sit down and chat. And Picasso, as I learned, has, was very influenced by the West in general. He was a big fan of Wild Bill Hickok. He grew up with cowboys in Spain, and he has. E there are even instances of him signing letters to Brock, your pard, as in your partner. <laughs> so there's this real. He's fascinated by the West, and this, you know, given his even his uh, early childhood, where he spent a lot of time with the bullfights, and he attended many bullfights throughout his life. So the the image really encapsulates kind of how they both fed each other in different ways, artistically and from that a relationship point of view, friend, as friends. And I show this image, this is Channing in his studio and he's painting one of the ranch hands. But I show it to say another aspect of Picasso's fascination with Channing, which is that not only is he this walking, talking cowboy, but he is a practicing artist. He's well, you know, he's well versed in contemporary art. He understands what's going on. He's reading a lot. He's seeing a lot of art. And here Picasso has this person that is a cowboy, but also a true artist in and of themselves. And this also gives you a little bit of hint as how uh, Channing worked. He would work all day in the ranch, or in the morning at least, and in the afternoons or evenings or both, he would spend his time in the studio. So art was always a part of his daily practice, whether it was you know, only a few hours here and there or, or an all-nighter. But he was every day in the studio. So of course we'll have other works by Picasso. This is a portrait of Mademoiselle D. M. And uh, we'll also have some works by Picasso that were given to Channing. So this is a drawing of a bullfight, and you can see on the side is inscribed to Channing. Uh, for, so this is in 59, and they first met in 53. And then another work that'll be in the show is this uh, selection of prints from the Tarahumaquia. And the Tarahumaquia was uh, this famous text written about bullfighting. It was kind of the ultimate primer in bullfighting, written by a famous <coughs> bullfighter to help young ones as they came along in the field. And he and this text was actually illustrated by Picasso. So we'll have a selection of these prints on view, which also gives some hint of his, but also his uh, extraordinary interest in animals as well, Picasso's interest, and especially the bull. <laughs> And I've included two images just so you can see Channing's work of bull. So here's a beautiful drawing, beautiful line drawings as well. And then another another animal that's been thrown up and he's up for slaughter. But also portraiture plays a role. Here's a Picasso print of these are both lithographs. And this is a lithograph also by this is by Channing. So we'll see <coughs> some of those similarities that exist in their practices, mm -hmm. a sort of flattened the flattened aspect of a lot of their work. Um, here, Picasso is using shading in a much more uh, through. Um, <coughs> uh, what am I trying to say? It's sort of a.
dense patterning, you know, to, to do the shading. Whereas here, you know, Channing is bringing that about through. <coughs> Thank you. <laughs> so there will also be lots of paintings of Channing's work showing his interest in using abstraction to depict his world, which is what makes Channing very unique. He's applying all the rules of abstraction to the world that he sees around him, which is the world of ranching. So there are horses, but there's also farm implements that you see. There's one on the other side of Bruce there. And he's really using form, he's using shape, color, but also these uh, kinds of these rules of abstraction, flattening things, so that they become almost totemic in, in uh, parts, and very foreign and strange, which is very unusual because you don't see abstraction being applied to these sorts of subject matters. And that's what really what makes Channing so unique, is that he was a rancher and then this extraordinary, you know, modernist <coughs> artist who was applying all those principles to the world that he was encountering. So in addition to paintings, prints, and drawings, we'll also have some sculptural works. These are three ceramics by Pablo Picasso, and I, in going through the research, because I've spent a lot of time with Cherie and a lot of time with her files, I have found some really interesting things, like a receipt from of Channing that he, a receipt that, that was a, of a purchase that Channing made of three ceramic Picassos. So, the, so these are, I can't be sure which ones he purchased, but these are from the time period. And they'll be as a stand-in, sort of things that Channing was interested in. Um, but they, they will also be balanced by some of uh, Peake's own sculptures. And the other aspect of the exhibition that I'm really excited about, and that I hope you are all too, which is that there'll be a gallery devoted just to Channing's life. because. If I have learned anything throughout this process, Channing was a pretty awesome guy. He knew how to have fun, he had a great time, but he was also really smart. And I sort of, and I want all of that great energy to be represented in this other exhibition space. And I want the liveliness and the, the kind of pure joy he had in living to be, to be represented in this space. So it will include also works of art. This is Rancho Habale, a painting, and his hat, which you will also see over here. But also his diary. This is a page from his diary where he talks about meeting Pablo Picasso. And then, of course, references to Driftwood, who is the famous quarter horse that Channing helped to foster and to, uh, whose lineage is famed even today. So all of these materials will be part of this exhibition and incorporate you know, diaries, photographs, audio. I, there are a few folks here that I've already talked to wanting because I'd like to tape record you so that that audio can be part of the exhibition. Now, before I sign off, I'm giving all of you a job, which is I am incorporating all of you into my research. I need some help. I want to find this painting, which is, I'm sorry to say, it's a very bad reproduction, mainly because it is taken from a news clipping. So hopefully you can see that it's a butcher block. And this is the saw, beaver, and then the head here. I'm trying to track this painting down, so if any of you have seen it, let me know. I would be very excited. So that's one, so don't forget this one. And then the other is this painting here, which is, come on, it's awesome. Like, I have to find this painting. So <laughs> if any of you see this in the valley, I'm sure it's squirreled away somewhere here. Uh, that would be wonderful to know. So now you're all art historian researchers. <laughs> We're in this together, okay? Maybe Picasso's family has it. <laughs> Maybe we need to do a research trip to find that out. <laughs> <laughs> so in closing, I want to remind you that the reception is on July 12th, 5.30 to 7.30. Make sure you all come. We're still in the throes of doing a lot of the research. I'm hanging out with Cherie a lot, talking to her on the phone every day. Um, and we're also still in the process of fundraising. This, we, the museum really relies on philanthropic donations from private individuals. And we're looking, this exhibition is $75,000, so we're still working towards that goal. But in the meantime, I hope that you will all be very excited about this forthcoming show and that you will come and see me on July 12th because I'll be waiting for all of you. <laughs> now I want to turn this over to question and answers and for that I feel like I need, I have